Now, yesterday, the Bank of England left interest rates on hold, for now. The so-called bank rates, the interest our central bank charges commercial banks, by definition the lowest interest rate in the entire economy, was kept at the ultra-low emergency level of 0.1%. This was widely seen as a surprise. With inflation running at 3.1%, well above the bank's 2% target, the money markets were betting the bank's Monetary Policy Committee, or the MPC, would vote to bear down on those price pressures by raising interest rates from 0.1% at least to 0.25%. But yesterday lunchtime, as we reported here on The Money, the nine MPC economists voted by 7-2 to two to keep rates on hold, despite weeks in which market expectations of a rise were stoked by comments and speeches from Bank of England policymakers. The MPC also voted 6-3 to three to continue the bank's bond purchases under its so-called quantitative easing scheme. So, despite big upward inflationary pressures, the virtual money printing goes on. Reflecting that this was a surprise decision, the pound plunged around 1.5% against the dollar, Traders had expected higher interest rates and therefore higher returns on money held in sterling. And when that didn't happen, they sold billions and billions of pounds instead. Since yesterday, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey has come in for criticism. Given that just two weeks ago, he said the bank, quotes has to act to tackle inflation. Some now compare him with his predecessor, Mark Carney, branded an quotes, unreliable boyfriend for repeatedly allowing markets to predict a rate rise before then keeping rates on hold. The economist Gerard Lyons, himself a previous candidate for Bailey's job, accused the Bank of England governor of appalling signalling. Peter Kinsella, head of currency strategy at Swiss bank Union Bancaire Privé, a serious person, branded the bank's mixed messaging pathetic. In terms of how it signals and interacts with the market, the Bank of England can no longer be considered a major central bank. That was Henry Cook of the mighty Mitsubishi Financial Group. Then Viraj Patel, a strategist at the influential financial research house Vanda, he remarked, the unreliable boyfriend is back. Now, whether you think rates should go up or not, central banks, particularly leading central banks like the Bank of England, stand or fall on their credibility. The worst thing any governor can do is spread confusion and lose the confidence of financial markets. Get that wrong and markets can rebel, lurching through peaks and troughs, causing financial chaos. And that's why the question we're discussing today is less about politics and personalities, but it goes straight to the heart of UK economic policymaking. Is the Bank of England governor an unreliable boyfriend? <laughs> 